Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and these are the CLFO and the Matrixable Mixer by A to V Project. So you're probably wondering why I'm doing a double expose on two modules. So on the one hand, the CLFO and the MM. And the question then becomes is, okay, well, if you're doing a double expose, why are you holding two of the exact same modules and what are these cables doing there as well? So we've planned this video to coincide with the official launch of both the CLFO and the matrixable mixer by A to V project. So I've been working with A to V project on this video and we're hoping that this now coincides and I'm hoping this is not gonna spoil any sort of surprises for their release party. Um, but indeed, we've got the CLFO, which you might call A to V projects pièce de résistance, so it's indeed a complex LFO um, consisting of, well, two totally independent LFOs, uh, which are, of course, uh, CV controllable from a rate perspective. And it does offer, well, dedicated outputs for six wave shapes. So three per um, LFO, you might even say. So on the first LFO, you'll have an output for, indeed, the triangle wave, a saw wave, and pulse. And then on the second LFO, you'll have the exact same thing. But of course, the saw wave is going to be transposed into a ramp wave there as well. As mentioned, both of these are CV controllable. LFO 2 does have an attenuator for CV control and based on the overall normaling you'll have the well the triangle wave of LFO1 normaled to the input for CV2 so you immediately have a use for that CV attenuator but that's not all. You also have a ring modulator. So again, this is normal to use the triangle wave for uh, well LFO1 and LFO2 with a dedicated output right there as well. Uh, but you do have inputs. So you can indeed use this as a ring modulator for anything either at audio rate or CV rate, whatever you want. So that's the CLFO, the Complex Low Frequency Oscillator by A to V Project. And then, of course, we've got this. So what do we have here? Here we've got the Matrixable Mixer, again, by A to V Project. And they've made the great decision to sell this as a set of two. But that's not where we stop because you can indeed add as many of these to your set as you want. And one of the great things that they've decided is not to just say, well, if we always sell this as two modules, why not combine this into one single module? Because you then have the option to place these mixes wherever you want in your, well, your rack case. And the reason for that is exactly the cables between them because even though this is a very straightforward matrixable mixer with four inputs inputs one to three are indeed normal to any well following module that you might have so you can also use this to route any sort of signal from anywhere in your well uh, in your rack to another place and of course these cables are of course already quite long uh, but nothing is stopping you from creating your own longer cables and putting this on your 500 hp module from left to right you can do that the beauty then also is is that it's not just attenuators on all inputs no but inputs three and four have attenuators. So this opens up 
a lot of possibilities going forward. Again, I'm not going to dive into all, well, m more complex or advanced patches in this video. This video is just meant as a first look, but there is a lot of value in the uh, manuals, which will be released at this exact time as well. And I'll link to those below. And I'll also link to the interview I've had with A to V projects somewhere on screen or in the comments down below. I'll figure that out later on. That being said, spoiler alert, I really like these. And uh, that being said, let's dive right in and I'll talk to you at the end of the video. Cheers. So here we've got today's objects of interest. So we've got the CLFO and the MM. And as mentioned, I've got the MMX2. And typically you'll get the MM in an X2 bundle because that's where it really shines if you've got two or maybe even more of them but i'm gonna dive into the clfo first and organically transition into the mm later on so as mentioned clfo the complex lfo uh, we've got two independent uh, lfos low frequency oscillators and as you can see well we've got some nice indicating leds there and this really helps so maybe if i do it like this you'll be able to see it huh there we go so you've got two ports there to set the actual lfo rates you've got cv inputs for both lfo rates with an attenuverter specifically for the second LFO. And one thing to keep in mind is that if you don't have anything patched, you'll have the first LFO normal to the inputs for CV2 for the second LFO. So if I then turn this on, You'll see this behaving in a lot more chaotic manner. But again, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So what I'd like to do is I want to give everyone a bit of insight. And the best thing is, well, everyone knows that I'm a very visual. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to patch this in so you can see what's happening. So first, let me patch in the triangle wave for the first one the triangle wave for the second one and you'll immediately see that this will then be reflected on the scopes there there you go and again purple equals purple make things a bit easier to see then we'll get into which are a, a saw wave or a ramp so the first LFO will have a saw wave as you can see from the illustrations on there And the second LFO will have a ramp. So again, you'll already start to see how those two are different. And of course, you can just turn this on. So you'll see that this is behaving differently. And then if we go into the green, which are the pulse waves for the LFO. First and second. And we'll just patch these in. So if we then do the same thing we just did, and that's just adding a bit of CV control from LFO1 to, LF, uh, to LFO2, you'll start to see that we'll have 
a couple of these very interesting modulations. If we then turn the frequency a bit further down, maybe increase this one, decrease that one, you'll start to see we can get some very interesting modulations altogether. However, there is another output right there, and that's the, well, the ring modulation. And the ring modulation has two inputs, X and Y, and this is the X times Y. So if we then grab a blue cable into the last one, you'll be able to see that as well. So if you don't have anything patched in there, it's gonna be normal to the triangle waves. And this is, of course, a very interesting piece of modulation, especially if you go into a bit higher frequencies. It's very nice. It's very interesting. It's very compelling, if you ask me, especially if you get them into the same range. It's a very rich modulation that you'll get there. So that being said, this is what you'll get. This is what you'll be able to do. However, there are some other key things that you can do. Of course, self-patching uh, can, of course, be done. And one of the key examples in the CLFO manual is patching LFO2 to itself. And then you'll have the, well, the attenuator right here as a, well, as a wave shaping, well, control of sorts. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly unpatch that one, put that into a multiple, and from there get the multiple back in, and patch that into the CV1. And at the same time, I do need to patch that into the as well, so we can actually see what we're doing. So there you go. So we've got that patched in. No problems there whatsoever. So if we then increase the attenuator right there, you'll get into the shapes that you'll be able to recognize from the manual. However, I also want to point you to the ring modulation output. And I really like these shapes and I'll be patching these into some very interesting uh, modulation sources and the modulation targets, essentially, because I, I do like these, well, let's call them hyperbole-based or, uh, well, it's, it's not essentially just that. It's more of a, what's the mathematical term for that? I'll have to think about that, but I... I, I do love those kind of uh, patterns and you can do all kinds of things to that. Um, but maybe it's nice if we patch that into something else that we can actually listen to. So I'm just gonna unpatch that. Grab another cable. So we can still see what we're doing because I like to do that. and then maybe patch that into the filter cutoff or maybe the FM for an oscillator. So what I'll do is I'll just grab the, uh, the sine wave of the owner right here. And we can immediately hear that that's playing. But if I then also grab that ring modulation output and I'm just going to patch that into the FM input
and the, the reason why I'm using the Orna is that it's got an attenuator on the FM input as well. <laughs> There's a lot of variation in there. It's it's got the rhythm. There's a lot to it, but essentially, um, it depends on whether or not you like this. Because some people might call this noise. I like to listen to these sort of things, especially if you put it into a bit lower LFO ranges. But this is just the triangle wave patched to itself but we can of course also do that with another one so let's do this with the ramp and let's just turn this down for now so now we've got the ramp we've got the other one there as well and you can start exploring some of the so here we've got a bit more of a yeah let's call it more of an envelope shape a shark wave uh, you already have something on the pulse one where you might say oh this looks like pulse with modulation or almost so you can do a lot of crazy things with this um, what I do have to say of course is that uh, neither one of the CV inputs tracks Volt per octave. Of course, you can try and get it right with the attenuator, but it's typically not the intended purpose of this module. So if we go into a bit further, you can go all the way in there or all the way down and you'll, you'll get back to it. So then let's do the last one, which is the pulse. There we go. So again, triangle is purple, ramp is red, and you've got the one there too. So, and you'll get into the whole shebang. Did I do this right? I don't think so, because I'm now I've now got this repatch there. So I need to redo this patch. So again, it's something you can work with. It, it as, as mentioned, it's got a lot of potential because you've got both of these LFOs connected and you've got your ring modulator there too. And just from an LFO perspective, well, the sky is the limit, right? So what you'll then also have is indeed, well, if you want to do something like a delayed LFO uh, that you might want to use, let me just disconnect this altogether. So I'll just disconnect these and let's focus just on LFO number one. So how about we just a single, um, let's say we'll do it like this, open that up a bit faster and we'll just grab the output of the ring modulator but instead of just using the triangle there we'll now patch a envelope into that so if we grab one of these other cables let's see which one sh shall we use in this case 
I'll just grab these. Ah, this is always the thing, right? When you've got too many cables lying around. So I've got the ring modulation set up. But instead of just using the triangle from one and the triangle from the second, I'm now just gonna patch in a envelope. So we're just gonna grab an envelope from here, patch that into the Y, and we're just gonna trigger that. So I'm using my trusted Pamela's workout to trigger that. And we might want to do that a bit longer. And what you'll see is that we'll get a very interesting delayed LFO. So if we then Maybe make that even a bit longer. So if we then patch that into, for instance, the frequency modulation there. Or instead of that, just doing it into the full prop. This is, of course, something that you might want to start using in some of your well, some of your patches. So let's then dive into the MM. And as you'll see, I've got two of these, and that's going to be true for everyone because the MM module, the matrix mixer will be sold as a kit of two and the beauty is of course that um, all of these will be normal at, at least of course well let me just rephrase there the first three inputs will be normal to any well consecutive modules after that so if you've got anything patched into one two or three and you've got the modules connected on the on the back you'll then have these same available on any consecutive module and this opens up a world of possibilities so right now let me just reconnect number four and the reason why number four isn't moduled is that if you don't have anything connected to that this is normal to a voltage generator so it's either well uh very much up until 10 volts all the way down to minus 10 and the thing is that all of these have a x2 well a multiplier so even if you've got something like a plus five connected to this you will be able to go all the way up to plus 10. And this is what happens here. So you've got the purple one, which is connected to the triangle wave over there. And as you'll see that the max on the purple one is approximately four. 
and it's approximately eight on the output there. So it does offer that ability to well, amplify it twice. Um, so this is of course something that you can then really start to work with. So on inputs one and two, you've got an attenuator all the way up to times two. And as you'll see, it's going to max out. Of course, I've got this connected to the uh, ES9, which is uh, going to be capping at around, well, plus 10 and minus 10. But if you then go a bit lower, you'll see that you'll get some very nice mixing capabilities. Three and four in that regard, they will be a 10 u vertus so you can go from zero to minus and plus and again offering that times two modulation and right now i don't have anything patched into number four but if i patch in something into number four the yellow one it's going to be the exact same so let me just put all of these at zero So this is how you can then mix it. And the beauty then becomes is it, let's say, okay, I'm going to disconnect the blue one from the first one and go into the second one. And I have the exact same signals available to me, of course, with the exception of in this case, the fourth one. So this offers, again, a world of opportunities. And it's not just limited to CV. It does work very well at audio rates. And you can then start using the MM, whether you've got one of them, two of them, three, four, X of them. You can do all sorts of things. So a couple of things to point out is you can then use these as, for instance, effects sense uh, but you can also use these as for instance well even side chaining or ducking and well the possibilities are endless so that being said let's just change these and let's start and and just do a bit of everything here so then let's have a quick look at how we can use the mm x2 as an audio mixer and again uh, what i'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to use the first one as a, as a very simple straightforward audio mixer so we've got our lead our bass drum our uh our tom you might say and a bit of well that's how would you call this? And let's just play around with this. And then we'll dive into what we can do with the second one. Now, 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 now
So the beauty then becomes is that if you've got these lined up, you can then use the second one as a send gate or at least a send module. So what I can now do is I can just send, for instance, the lead to the Nautilus off screen. And I can just mix that in. I can still mix in a bit of the original one. I can play with that however I want. just one of those other great examples on how you can really use the well the the matrix mixer x2 by hv project so as said this is not going to be a be all end all deep dive into all two well all three essentially of these modules um, i'm gonna release some other more advanced videos afterwards but I did want to make sure that everyone had a chance to look at these and see how I want to use these going forward and just enjoy these sort of patches that you, that you can actually do immediately with these. I just love these and again thanks so much for um, these great modules A to V project I love you guys and uh, good luck on the release talk soon cheers so first off I hope you enjoyed this video uh, but I did want to uh, close off with my personal thoughts uh, let's start with the CLFO so first of all for a 6 hp module consisting of two totally independent lfos with dedicated outputs with cv control with attenuation on cv control plus a ring modulator what's not to love i think that this one has a place in everyone's rack if you're serious about modulation this is a great starting point whether you are uh, just diving into your rack or if you've got like a couple of thousands worth of hp of your rack modules 
this is a no-brainer. Of course, there are some things that you might say, okay, well, it doesn't track uh, Vault Proactive. Um, again, that's not something I really think that this module uh, is intended for. This is purely meant to be, well, a modulation source. Let's keep it at that. You might then also say, well, I want this to be synced to, uh, to my clock. That might be something where you might say, okay, well, yeah, I understand where that's coming from, or I might want to get a reset signal or a sync signal in there as well. But again, I don't think that that's the purpose of this module as it is. There are other um, modules out there that can do that, but just for the sheer value of what you're getting in 6 HP, this is, again, this is a no-brainer. And I think that that's very true in what we've uh, shown in this video. Um, I'm going to do some deep dives into this going forwards and how you can apply this for, um, well, in, in, in stereo mixing, maybe even into, okay, well, how can you then use this uh, in, well, more complex modulation sequences? It's got a lot of potential and I've only scratched the surface. So CLFO, I can only recommend this. I love it. Then let's dive into the matrixable mixer. Again, one of the key things I really like is the decision that A to V projects made that they will sell these as a set of two because if I were to, well, just measure this on its own, it will probably still get a very positive review or a very positive recommendation for me. But exactly that possibility of being able to, well, combine two or more of these, that's sheer genius, if you ask me. And it's, very straightforward because if you want to route something from one end of your uh, of your case to another uh, you can then of course use patch cables or anything else but if you want to have a combined set of modulation that you want to send from one side of your rack to another this is <laughs> again a no-brainer this is again something that you can just buy install and use in every one of your patches. I think that this is gonna be one of those modules that you'll be seeing me use all the time for each and every one of my patches. And that's not because I've got ginormous cases or anything, but I've got that need to route modulation from one side to another. And I want to be able to reuse modulation but then I do want to make sure that that's always in a very musical way. And that's where the inclusion of attenuverters on channels three and four really shines, where you are able to indeed say, hey, well, I've got a modulation source coming in, but I want it to be uh, panned from left to right going forward and I'll dive more into these examples in the more advanced videos after this but just on the surface and again for two times four HP just from a real estate perspective this is a very well no-brainer recommendation however if you then take into account that these are very affordable that makes it even a stronger recommendation, at least as well, as far as I'm concerned. That being said, I do have to thank A to V Project for working on this video with me, and I have to thank them for their time with the video interview that you can find somewhere up there below, wherever. I'll link to that as well. I will recommend everyone to uh, at least watch that it does shed a light on their design philosophy, on their approach to designing modules, 
but also on how they view life. And I always feel that module design and module design philosophy is always a reflection of the makers, well, view at the world. And again, this is something where I truly believe that a flexible way of looking at the world, looking at your Eura case, looking at your, well, design approaches to sound, music, ambient, whatever, it shines through in these modules. And I will probably <laughs> make sure that I'm not just going to limit myself to two of these. And I truly love the CLFO and the CLFO plus the MM are a great combination. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Thanks again to ATV Project. And I hope the release party was a great success. But for now, I would say, please, everyone, stay safe. Stay healthy. And see you for the next one. Cheers.